HNL Network. This is your Detroit Red Wings edition report. And this is a review of our preseason game number one last night, which is the Pittsburgh Penguins versus Detroit Red Wings, September 27th. Today is September 28th, 2022. And last night we got a chance to see a version of the Detroit Red Wings play the pretty much the lineup of the Pittsburgh Penguins. And the outcome might not be what we expected. Uh, it was a very good night for some of the players we talked about in the red and white game. And if you check out the previous video about the wrap up of training camp and the red and white game, you'll see some names that are very similar to who stood out in this game. So uh, this game, first off, if you take a look, the Red Wings dominated the faceoff circle against the Pittsburgh Penguins. We'll take a look at the rosters actually in a sec. So that kind of will actually punctuate who was playing against who in this. And the Red Wings did real well. They had 21 shots on goal and the Penguins at 33. Uh, but the Penguins dressed both Casey DeSmith and Tristan Jari. They're probably their number one and their number two goalie is my assumption. Um, <laughs> and the Red Wings had uh, Victor Bratstrom, who, you know, he's pretty interesting goaltending prospect. We didn't really talk about him much or see him in the red and white game or talk about him very much in training camp. But Victor Bratstrom makes it over in time for preseason game number one. And he looked pretty darn good. And then Sebastian Casa continues to impress overall. Um, he didn't face a lot of shots in this game, but he looks better than he did for Team Canada. So I think his pros his prospects tournament, his training camp, and now his preseason game number one appearances are all very promising if you're a Detroit Red Wings fan. Red Wings blocked 15 shots in this game. So that probably means 48 shot attempts by the Penguins. Interesting, you would block 15 shots in a preseason game. So that the level of intensity and desperation that we're seeing shift to shift by the Red Wings, I think, has really improved. And, um, you know, the score is really the telling. But they had nine power plays for the Penguins. It was insane. There were six in a row at one point, and the Red Wings only had two. So they probably have to dial that in a little bit because, you know, some there was, like, some high-sticking stuff, and Elmer Soderblom took a penalty. It was, it was interesting. Anyways, um, the score would normally, you would think, not translate here, but it was 6-2 to two for the Red Wings in the end. It's crazy. So how does that happen? Uh, Penguins get on the board early with a goal from Brock McGinn. He should be on the opening night roster, so, uh, assisted by Patterson, who's one of their top four defensemen. And then the Red Wings respond with a goal from Dominic Kubelik. And, you know, I think Kubelik is showing he can really shoot the puck. He's a He's still a dangerous attacker, and I think this is going to be a great pickup by the Red Wings. They might really have scored here by getting him. In the second period, then, we saw Philip Zadina continues to impress. He he might have been the top player overall in this team. Like He just continues to show speed, great playmaking, intensity. Uh, the fact that he got on the board was interesting because he scored from the left circle, and a lot of times he'll set up for that one-timer on the right side. And Being a left shot, though, he was on the left circle – and he scored a pretty decent goal over the shoulder of um, Tristan Jari. So Tristan Jari, who's you know probably their number one goalie again, uh, well, for sure. I mean, he was Vesna Trophy candidate at least last year. Did he win it? I can't remember who won the Vesna last year. Um, but he was in the mix. Like, he was the reason Pittsburgh was in the playoffs last year. It's preseason, so we don't get too crazy. But, you know, good showing by Zadina. Rasmussen looked really good and didn't see much from, uh, well, Actually, we saw a lot from Jonathan Bergeron as he assisted on the next goal at Elmer Soderblom. And I mentioned Austin Zarnick. He had a really good camp, I thought. He's a very talented player. He's just very small. It's going to be interesting to see if he sticks around with the Red Wings. Like There might be some dark horse guys like that. Soderblom's presence was also very evident. This guy's got to make the opening night roster. I think you heard from the interview with uh, Derek Lalonde that they're trying to give Elmer Soderblom as many chances as possible so they can see him. And I just think the more you watch this guy, the more you're going to fall in love with them. Uh, Steve Camfer then gets on the board and assists from Zadina. This is a power play goal. I don't think Camfer is going to be on the opening night roster, but you never know. Like he just might be a six, seven type utility defenseman. Otherwise, you know, he'll be in the AHL with Grand Rapids. Then Brian Rust, they'd switch goalies halfway on both teams and, Brian Russ comes in and backhands a really nice goal over the shoulder of Sebastian Kosa. Uh, considering Kosa's six foot six or six foot seven, depending on how you measure him, it was kind of a crazy goal when you go back and watch it. Assisted by Jason Zucker. Tyler Spezia gets on the board. He looked good in this game. I don't think he's going to be on this roster. I mean, 
he's an AHL player as far as I can tell. Small player, five foot ten, speedy. Never been a big, big goal scorer, but he's got a good energy about him, and he looks pretty decent. But he's not young. I mean, I just don't see this working out for him. But at least he got into a preseason game. And then Dominic Kubalik finishes the game off with a shorthanded goal, a turnover. It's kind of a bad play. He came around the left post on the, on the PK, and there was a lot of them. There's nine PKs for Detroit. <laughs> came around, took the puck from Casey Smith and stuffed it pretty much in the open cage to finish the game off six to two. So, you know, this all seems like, ah, it's preseason, but look at who Pittsburgh dressed in this game. They had Malkin. They had Crosby who was a minus three and he was getting offensive opportunities. Rickard Reichel was on that line with Crosby and Gensel was in this game. Teddy Bluger, uh, Ryan Pelling. That's interesting. When did Ryan Pelling go to Pittsburgh? Am I missing something? I must have missed something on that. Uh, we'll have to check in with Coach Frenchie on that. Brock McGinn, who will be on the roster. Jake uh, Drake Kajula, I hope, is on the roster. This guy's always been a useful scorer at this kind of third line. He's not a big guy, and maybe he has some defensive, you know, you have some qualms if you're a coach about him defensively. Jason Zucker needs a big year. I like they need a big year at Jason Zucker. Uh, but you look at these are our opening night guys for the most part. And eight, listen, 18 minutes for, is it Radic Zahorna? I think this is the big Czech player that kind of came on at the end of last year. So these are all opening night guys. Brian Dumoulin, um, Jeff Petrie, who's an acquisition from Montreal. Did he come over with Pelling? I don't remember that. Um, you know, Pedersen, uh, Ruda, Latang. Like, this is their opening night roster in the NHL pretty much. <laughs> and then you look at Detroit, and, you know, you don't have any – you don't have Tyler Bertuzzi. You don't have Dylan Larkin. You don't have Lucas Raymond in this game. But you saw great shifts from Zadina and Rasmussen. Jonathan Bergen looked great. You had Cross Hannes in this game. Tutti have played well, but Kubelik was definitely, you know, tops. It's nice to see Elmer Soderblom get on the board. He only played 11 minutes, which was a little bit surprising to me. But he, you know, this guy's going to be really hard to keep off the roster. I don't see how you don't want him on your roster. And then on defense, it was kind of interesting. We know that Detroit's really emphasizing improving defensively. Ali Mata played solid. Uh, Ronick played solid as his partner. We don't have Moritz Sider in this game. We don't have Ben Sherratt. We have Jared McIsaac, who, you know, he had some, he played logged a lot of time, 19 minutes. He was a minus one, but I thought he played pretty well. Um, Vero, the finished defenseman, I keep saying, this guy might make the opening night roster. He's quick. He's physically, he's like engaged. He's got an active stick. He's hard to play against one-on-one. -on -one. I don't see Camper on this opening roster, but you never know. Like he played 19 minutes last night. He's, you know, capable of playing six, seven minutes, like six, seven line, uh, you know, number six, seven defenseman minutes in the NHL. And Jordan Osterley, I would assume, will be on the opening night roster, but again, is a six, seven in his case. And then we mentioned, you know, um, Sebastian Casa, seven of eight, didn't face a lot of shots in his half of the game. Victor Bradstrom had a little bit more action, 11 of 12 shots he stopped. So this was overall pretty good showing for Detroit. What do we see next? Well, we have another game tonight, Detroit facing off. And by the way, this game was broadcast on NHL.com. So when you looked at the box score, there was a video, a live video option. Tonight we see them against Chicago. I believe this game is in Detroit. So we'll see who they dress. Um, I think what they're saying is that tonight, Olkanura, who we saw in pre in the red and white game, is paired with Andre Nedokovic. So that's what's showing right now is being dressed tonight. And they're, I don't know, they're, they're showing every single player, though, on the roster. So I don't I don't know who's actually in tonight. We'll have to check the internet. Uh, do we get to see Peter Morazic tonight for Chicago? Is Alex Stalock in? Not sure. There's a lot of, you know, this is a stripped down Chicago Blackhawks roster. So there's a lot of guys fighting for jobs. Um, maybe we get to see Lucas Reichel, who I'm pretty excited about. But other than that, I mean, Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane, they're in their last year with this team. So you got to think at some point, this might be our last chance to see them in Chicago uniforms. I cannot see them wanting to return to this. And it, I can't see them not getting traded. <laughs> like, that would be crazy. They've got to move these guys for their sake and... Well, really for their sake and get some assets back for these legends. Anyways, we look forward to the game tonight. Detroit Red Wings versus Chicago Blackhawks. This is your update on HNL. 
And we look forward to seeing an update. We will provide an update on the game versus Chicago tomorrow.